Hey everybody, welcome to another video. This is Hardy with Electronic Test Equipment. And today, y'all have probably been waiting for something like this. We're gonna take a look at the Fluke 88 Automotive Multimeter. But there's a special surprise in here because it's not just a Fluke 88. Let's open it up and take a look. It's a Fluke Automotive Test Equipment bag here. And we all know that the Fluke 88 multimeters accompany bags like this. If you're rolling with the full kit, you've got this bag and all of the accessories that go along with it. Any of this look familiar to y'all? Checking spark plugs. Got a wiring harness. Some short stubby flathead screwdrivers. And some probe tips, clamps. Extra set of test leads. Ooh, look at this, we even got the instructions. Oh man, it's broken. Look at that. See that? Man. This. You know, sometimes you find a surprise and you get excited because it's all there, but then the, when you inspect it, it's like not. Anyway, it is what it is. So let's take a look at this meter. This meter, it's, it's a fluke. But check it out, it's a Fluke ET-DMM. This is a Mac Tools meter. So this was a special arrangement because Mac Tools, they've got their distribution outlet. They've got their distribution trucks that drive around and go to the meters, go to all the auto shops. These auto shops have their arrangements with the Mac Tool trucks and it's the same thing. This is a Fluke 88. But for Mac Tools, they branded it, they still has the Fluke brand, but it, the, the model number is the Mac Tools ET 88 DMM. So I just pulled this meter out to have a look. I don't know if it's going to work properly, but let's power it on and let's see what we have. Okay, so there's no power. No power. You now sometimes if you look at this, you can see a lot of dust around the switch here. The slight discoloration, that's a lot of dust. We can also see that the dust seal is coming off. And when it looks like this, it's never going back on. It's, uh, it's, it's gone. So this looks like it was used pretty often in a heavy duty environment. It's a little bit dusty. I can feel the grains on the unit. It's got the dust on the switch. The dust seal is open. So sometimes when you look at these meters, maybe try, try it a few times. Turn it on and off. Maybe the switch is dirty and just needs a good, a good rotation. Could be some dust buildup inside. So, um, now that we know it's not that, now we can go ahead and proceed to open it up and see what we're looking at here. So this is the older style legacy meter because it doesn't have the separate battery compartment. But it does have... No, it does not. It does not have their website on here. We looked at another... We made another video and we were looking at their... 
website domain name was stamped on the back. This must be just before that. Or maybe they did not do that with these older legacy models, but when they started including the battery compartment with the separate door, when they started including the battery compartment with the separate door, maybe that's when they started stamping with their domain name on there. It's very interesting stuff. So uh, let's open this up and see what we have. We're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver. It's already missing one screw. I hope that's not a broken post inside there. But we're going to open it up and see what we're looking at. You know, these, these units, they had to start including the battery door because this, ha this is such a common problem. Most meter operators weren't aware that you have to hold, you have to lift up from the top case and, and kind of hold the dust seal in place. But it's too late for this one. open it up there we go and there's no battery just gonna give it a quick visual inspection make sure everything looks okay make sure there's no obvious signs of burns or smells Seems pretty clean in here. Another common problem with pretty much all of these legacy meters is going to be the 9 volt battery connector. You can see how it solders into the edge here. I'll take it out. So you could see the, the battery connector. how it just solders on here. And when there's a lot of usage and a lot of battery changes, one of the common problems is that the battery connector comes off, breaks. I've seen where it's looked perfectly fine, but it's had a, a broken wire inside of this padding. So replacing the nine volt battery is not is not too much of a hassle as long as you have the replacement now this is a 9 volt battery connect connector replacement but this would not be an ideal one to use because it's too thick this might work with other applications but this is hard plastic and it's too thick for these meters like this. So when you're dealing with these old legacy fluke meters, the 80, the 80 series, you want to you want to get the flat, padded. No, it's I don't, it's not really padded, but you know you want to get it's a little more flexible. So you want to get the one that's like this. At any rate, let's uh, install a nine volt battery and let's see. What happens? Stand by. And we're going to tuck the 9 volt battery wires in just a little bit. Just to make sure they don't get snagged up on anything. And we've got the, oh, these are dirty. You all are familiar with the difference between the Fluke 88s and the Fluke 87s, 83s, 85s. The Fluke 88s have the RPM feature. I'm not sure that there's too big of a difference in the accuracy. They're all pretty accurate to industry standards. 
but the Fluke 88 specifically was made for the automotive industry and therefore has an RPM feature with duty cycle. Okay, so we've got the 9 volt battery in there. It's a good battery. It's a new battery. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, right. It works. I'm going to do a close up of the power on so you can see how the display is supposed to look. A nice, clean, clear display will look like this when it's powered on. All of the segments light up. I will get a good angle. Don't y'all worry about that. So that's all for this video. I just wanted to see if this thing would power on and if there were any obvious signs of malfunction. There are some cosmetic issues with this unit, but the next step is going to be to test it for accuracy in each of the different ranges and verify that it's functioning as intended. I hope you all enjoyed the video. This is Hardy with Electronic Test Equipment, and I will catch you all on the next video. Take care, everybody.